So why would you want to unmask a covert narcissist? After all, the mask is kind of like the nicest part about them, right? The mask is what you'll see before you start seeing the emotional abuse that comes a little bit later. That's when their true nature comes out. And that's when they really start to knock you down. You almost feel like they're cutting you down at your knees constantly at every turn. So if you can follow these tips and unmask the covert narcissist, it'll probably provide some much needed clarity for you because these relationships are incredibly confusing. And you may also find some validation in knowing what's going on and that you're not the only one who's been here. A lot of people have been in your shoes and are in your shoes right now. And if you're already past this stage, learning how to unmask a covert narcissist is still important because it can help you set healthy boundaries and keep them. And when you're comfortable with setting those boundaries, you will naturally repel all the narcissists in your life. And if this sounds like where you're at right now, I would highly suggest checking out my Narcissist Immunity Bootcamp. The link is in the description. In this program, there's an entire module on setting boundaries with a narcissist. And we also go into great depth on building emotional resilience. So you can stop being triggered by the narcissist in your life. My name is Christina and this channel is dedicated to recognizing and breaking free from emotional abuse. If this is a topic that's touched your life, consider subscribing. And if you are in that stage where you're just figuring things out, I have a free download that's going to be very helpful for you. This download comes with a checklist for each of the phases of abuse that you'll endure with a narcissist. So you can use this list to see how things stack up in your relationship. So the first tip I have for you, if you think you're dealing with a covert narcissist, if you're seeing tendencies there, or maybe you're just curious, the one thing that you can do that is really the most telling, especially early on, is to say no. Don't give in to whatever demand or request they may have. And you don't have to be mean about it. In fact, I would suggest actually being nice and very pleasant. So you understand if they're coming back with a really negative reaction, it is 100% on them and not on you. So try saying no to something that you actually don't really wanna do. Maybe it's a restaurant that you really don't feel like going to or plans that you'd rather not make. And if there's nothing, you can start saying no to just something trivial. So if you are dealing with a covert narcissist or somebody, anybody who's highly narcissistic, you're gonna find that this person does not like hearing no and they don't handle it very well. So what you can expect is something that's akin to an adult temper tantrum. So they may stonewall you, shut you out, or they may go into bargaining and go to great lengths, even to the point where it's really irritating to try to get you to see things their way. Now we know that everyone likes getting their way. I like getting my way, I know you do too. But think about how you would react when you're with somebody that you care about and they don't wanna do something that you wanna do. Try to contrast what you would think is healthy behavior against how this person is acting. If it seems kind of like a tantrum, like they're not accepting no as the answer, pay attention. Pay attention to all that comes next. Pay attention every time they don't get their way because you're probably going to see a similar pattern of behavior. So the next tip I have for you is to look for signs of true empathy. And what I'm talking about here is emotional empathy. So a covert narcissist does not have a whole lot of emotional empathy. They can be very, very cold and sometimes very calculated. What they do have is cognitive empathy and cognitive empathy is what allows them to know that something they're doing or saying is going to trigger you. They logically know that emotions create reactions and they understand this very well. They can see the signs of it very well showing up in other people. And this is why they're such good manipulators. I would go so far as to say that the covert narcissist or really any narcissist probably has a stronger sense of cognitive empathy than the average person. And maybe it's something like how they say that when you lose one of your senses that the others become heightened. So they don't really have the emotional empathy that other people have. And it seems like their cognitive empathy is heightened. So they know exactly how to trigger you and they know when they're doing it, even when you don't tell them. 
So emotional empathy can really be described as the ability to relate to other people's feelings. So this is the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes to understand their perspective, even if you don't agree with it, and to actually feel an emotional connection with someone because you have that full understanding of their feelings and you have the ability to care. So now let's bring it back to the tip of looking for emotional empathy. So covert narcissists are extremely good at faking emotional empathy. And they do this because they know they have to. If they were to react in a way that felt natural to them all the time, it would be very obvious to everyone that something's a little off because the way that feels natural to them is not empathetic, it is not caring. It can be very cold, especially when it comes to other people's feelings. They're very good at bringing it back to them and their feelings, and they're very good at communicating their feelings at times, especially when they want you to care about them. They want your empathy, but they don't really have the ability to have that empathy themselves. So pay close attention to this. Pay attention to the feeling you get or the things you notice when other people get emotional around the narcissist. Does it seem like a genuine reaction? Sometimes it will, and sometimes it won't. And this is what can be so confusing because we think of this person as somebody who we have this true human connection with. But unfortunately, a lot of it is fake because they're faking that empathy. They're faking the caring that they seem to have about you and your feelings. So early on, you're gonna notice that this person fakes empathy a lot. And this is why it's so difficult to detect the covert narcissist because they often position themselves as the most empathetic. And you may even encounter a covert narcissist who claims to be an empath, somebody who is highly empathetic, the most empathetic person there is. So what you're looking for are signs that just something's a little bit off when empathy comes into play. So when other people get emotional, just something is off. Their reaction may be too extreme, over the top, or not quite enough. Pay attention to how this person treats other people, especially strangers. For example, let's say you're out somewhere and there's somebody who's hurt in front of you, they fall. Does the person you're with take time to help them? Do they seem to genuinely care or feel bad? Do they brush it off and say, ah, oh, they're fine? So when you're looking at subtle things like this, what you're looking for are patterns. So it's not just that one situation, but you see a pattern of them being very cold around other people, especially people that they don't want or need anything from. Now let's move on to the next tip. If someone has a history of cutting people off for no apparent reason, they might be a covert narcissist. And you may find also that these people really are comfortable bragging about it. It might be one of the first things they tell you that if someone crosses them, they cut them out. It doesn't matter who they are or how long they've known them. This person is gone and they never look back. And if they don't brag about it, you may find that this person really just doesn't have an inner circle. They don't have people that are really close to them because anybody who gets close to them gets hurt. And either that person ends up walking away or if you're dealing with a covert narcissist, they end up discarding that person. Now for the next tip, look for secrets that this person is keeping. Now, I'm not talking about digging through their phone or doing anything inappropriate yourself, but just keep an eye out for things that they seem to be hiding and pay attention to the way they act. Because let's face it, everyone has secrets from someone, right? So it's not just the secrets that are a problem, but it's really gonna be their reaction to your questioning. So if you're noticing behaviors like gaslighting or narcissistic word salad, and if you don't know what that is, I have a video that I'll link to on the subject, or you might notice rage for no apparent reason. So if you stumble on a secret that a covert narcissist is keeping and they really want to keep it that way, they might rage out at you to get you off the trail. And from the other side, it seems really not only unfair, but inappropriate for the situation. And bonus tip for those of you who know that you've been dealing with a covert narcissist for a long time, pay attention to exactly 
how they react. What is their go-to move? Because that is going to become their tell. And if you still have to keep this person in your life, keep that tell in mind when you touch on other things that make them react in the same way. Because this might be a clue that they're hiding something from you. And finally, if you want to unmask a covert narcissist, really all you have to do is be patient because they're going to end up unmasking themselves. You see, narcissists have a false persona. Not only do they have secrets, but they're hiding something really big. And one of their biggest secrets is that they aren't who they claim to be. They are not the person that they present to the world, and they're not even the person that they believe themselves to be. And the fact that the image they present when you first meet them or the image that they present in public is not their true selves, and this becomes very clear later on after you've known this person for a long time. But the fact that that's not their true selves that they're putting out to the world proves that they don't even like who they really are because if they did, then that would be the image that they present to you at first and to the rest of the world. So if you wait long enough, all the things that we've discussed here today will come out on their own. You don't actually have to look for signs that they're lacking empathy. That's going to become painfully obvious before too long. And what I would say if you're going to take the wait and see approach is to just really pay close attention because it's really easy to ignore the signs when other things are good, when this relationship means something to you. But in the long run, it's always going to be better for you to face the truth sooner rather than later. So now I want to hear from you. Have you ever gotten the mask to slip? on a covert narcissist? If so, how did you do it? Let us know in the comments. Maybe we can all learn a thing or two. And if you happen to know you're dealing with a covert narcissist and you're tired of their games and want to turn the tables, I'm going to link to a video right here that's going to show you how to do just that. And I'll see you next time.